Should you upgrade to Ryzen? When should you actually upgrade your computer? And have I upgraded my computers to the Ryzen platform? And if not, what platform am I still using? The answers to all these questions coming up. Roll the intro. Hey Nim Tags and welcome, this is Ash from Hill My Tech, helping you go from newbie to techie. I do have a couple of announcements to make at the end of the video, so stay tuned for those, one regarding a second channel and the other one regarding an upcoming website. I want to start this discussion by clearly stating that Ryzen is an absolutely great platform. And although I'm not a hardcore AMD fan, many of my computers are actually AMD based, whether it's graphics cards or processors, because at the time I needed a PC, AMD represented the best value for money for what I needed. When AMD released the first generation of Ryzen processors last March 2017, I was super excited and was looking forward to upgrading at least a couple of my PCs to the Ryzen platform. I'm not much of an early adopter of new tech, so I was looking forward to a shopping spree for Black Friday sales of November 2017. I already knew what I wanted, having picked the parts from PC Pop Picker. As you can see from the list, a complete new PC with all new parts, including a new monitor for AMD Ryzen 7 1700 would have cost me about £1,500 or over $2,000. Also, I left myself an option to keep some parts of my current PC and upgrade other parts and that would have cost me about £800 or close to $1,100. However, Black Friday sales 2017 turned out to be quite disappointing, partly because of the increased prices of RAM, SSD and graphics card, but mostly because I kind of reached an epiphany where I realized that I actually don't need to upgrade my current PC and I'm not planning to upgrade anytime soon. Before we proceed, I want to preface this discussion by stating at least these five points amongst others. Number one, if you need to buy or build a new computer, then absolutely consider Ryzen. Number two, if your computer is relatively old, then Ryzen should be on your shopping list as an upgrade. Number three, if you are a content creator and you're uploading daily at resolution of above 1080p, then absolutely Ryzen is the way to go. Number four, if you're a gamer, especially at the budget level, then absolutely Ryzen will provide you excellent value for money, especially when you pair that with the best graphics card you can afford. And number five, if you've got money to spare and you have no other obligations, then absolutely go treat yourself with a complete brand new Ryzen system because there is no such feeling that can beat that of a brand new toy. By the way, this video is not sponsored, but I have affiliate links in the description below, so please consider using them. It will give me a small kickback if you purchase anything and it will not cost you anything extra. So thank you for supporting the channel. So what current platform am I still using at the moment? It's the good old seven-year-old processor from the AMD FX series lineup, the FX8350. And worst of all, I'm not even thinking about upgrading anytime soon, whether it's the first generation of Ryzen processors or the upcoming second generation. Now, you might be laughing or ridiculing me, and that's fine, it's the internet, do your thing, but do hear me out first. If I had upgraded to Ryzen by now, three things would have happened. Number one, my PC would be running faster. Number two, my PC would be running cooler. And number three, my energy bills would be lower. At the same time, here are the three golden questions. Number one, would my PC be running 1500 pounds faster? Number two, would it be running 1500 pounds cooler? And number three, would my energy bills be 1500 pounds cheaper? And the answer is absolutely no. This is what is known as diminishing returns and I would be 1500 pounds poorer. Right, here's my current configuration. So I've got the AMD FX 8350. I have 16 gigabyte of DDR3 RAM. I have a graphics card from Sapphire, the Radeon R9 380 4GB VRAM. I've got two SSDs with two different operating systems, Windows and Linux. I've got three hard disk drive and one is for my main storage, one is for my home data and one is for backup. And I've got also a DVD drive, who uses it anymore, but anyway it was there. And uh, that's the basic gist of it. 
what do I use my computer for at the moment and ever since I've built it? So number one, I don't game, although it's kind of a pretty decent entry-level gaming system for 1080p and I've got a library of Steam games waiting for me to clock them, but who's got time to game her? Huh? Number two, I only film and upload at 1080p at the moment. Number three, although I've been on YouTube for the past three years, I've never really taken it seriously until last year. And at the moment, I'm averaging about two videos per week and each video is about 10 minutes on average. Number four, I use my PC for studies, general browsing and general office work. And number five, so the only current reason for me to need a multi-core PC is for the content creation part of the whole workflow. Any content creator will tell you that the process of uploading anything is not a product of chance, but rather there's a lot of pre and post production work that goes into it. Even if you're producing content which is less than professional, and I don't even consider myself as a professional content creator. Now this is different with people who can actually just take their smartphone, turn it on and vlog like crazy about anything and everything and they can daily vlog. Unfortunately for me, I suck at vlogging. And because my channel is a how-to channel, there's a lot of things I actually have to prepare to be able to upload content. Now I have a list of at least 27 steps that I have to take for each video that I want to upload, starting from brainstorming to planning to actual uh, production and uh, editing and uploading and, you know, putting all the metadata, etc. I'm going to put the list up on the screen so you can have an idea and I probably will do a more in-depth video about the whole process of content creation for YouTube. In the beginning, I was a complete noob and any single video could even take me up to a whole week to upload from the time I start to the time I actually finish publishing that on YouTube. Obviously with time I got better. At the moment, on average, every single 10 minute video can take me up to 12 to 15 hours in one single day from the time I start to the time I finish. Of course, there are plenty of content creation techniques that I'm aware of, which I'm not currently utilizing. For example, you know, batch uh, production, batch filming. If I did employ those techniques, it would be reducing my workflow by a lot. Now, out of these 27 processes that I mentioned to you, only two of them would actually benefit from an upgrade to Ryzen platform. And those two would be rendering, and compressing. The compression part is just an optional thing which actually helps me to upload onto YouTube much faster. As for the rendering part, a 10 minute video will take roughly on average 10 minutes to render. It depends on what I put in there as B-roll or what kind of actual content was a screen capture or a film from a DSLR, you know, a few variations, but generally 10 minute video, 10 minutes of rendering. And this processor is not even overclocked at the moment. I've never bothered to do it. So for my specific situation, had I upgraded to Ryzen 7 1700, for example, and using a very optimistic improvement of 200%, i.e. two times faster than the FX 8350, the Ryzen platform would save me on average five to 10 minutes per video per week. And that's being extremely conservative. I don't have the exact ratio for the comparison between the two platforms. I'm sure someone's done it. If not, I should probably get on that. But I'm guessing on average, maybe Ryzen 7 1700 would be about 150% faster, which means 1.5 times faster. But we're going to leave it at two times for an overstretched best case scenario, just to explain the point. Now, do you think that 10 minutes of time saved in and almost 30 hours of work per week would justify me uh, forking out 1500 pounds. Or even if you would argue that I would part upgrade, so you know, keep some of my components, sell some things, and then use that money to part upgrade for 800 pounds, would that, would 10 minutes per week justify 800 pounds of expenditure? Once again, absolutely no. Even if I were to increase my current uploads to three to five times a week, it would still not justify, not in my opinion. Now, you could argue the multi-core advantage of the Ryzen platform over the current FX 8350, which is true. At the moment, if I'm rendering the video during those 10 minutes, I'm not able to use the computer for any CPU intensive work. Like I can't start rendering something else. I can't, you know, uh, 
watch videos a lot but I can still do some light work like you know general browsing or some uh, word document etc because when the PC is rendering it's using almost a hundred percent of its CPU process typically though during render time I'm usually doing something else like for example preparing the next shoot equipment or even taking a bathroom break or a meal break or even just chilling so even if I had the Ryzen it would not really make a big difference to me now there is a general principle in economics which can actually be applied to anything in life really called the Pareto principle also known as the 80-20 rule the law of the vital few or the principle of factor sparsity essentially it means that for many events roughly 80% of the effects come from 20% of the causes and the vice versa is also true in business it means that 80% of your sales is coming from 20% of your clients now in a content creation context it would mean if I use that 80% of the budget on the Ryzen upgrade only it would only yield 20% of increased performance in terms of time management or even in generating income from YouTube Adsense I would even argue in my case it might be something like 90 10 or even less using that 80 20 principle I should use 20% of that budget only and invest in the process that will actually make 80% of difference to my whole workflow and time saving and generating income once again ask any content creator the best advice they would give you is you need to get everything right pre-production rather than trying to patch problems during editing time including trying to correct bad footage or worse having to reshoot the whole thing so here are a few alternatives that I could spend that money or 20% of that money instead on number one a teleprompter even a DIY version would cost me about 50 pounds if I use what's called a glass beam splitter and that would tremendously help in reducing filming time and reducing cuts and mistakes Number two, a second camera for B-roll and it doesn't have to be a brand new one or an expensive one because that would mean leaving my A-roll filming gear in place ready for action. Number three, a wireless microphone system which would mean less time trying to untangle cords and you know trying to set up a huge time saver. Number four, I could even pay for a course to learn professional and more efficient and effective video editing skills and I would speed up the whole edit process because the editing part can actually take 80% of the whole process of content creation ask anyone and number five a second used PC or tablet or laptop to use as a backup or as a reference point or even as a presentation tool during the filming and you know I can actually build one for really next to nothing on that note, I would even argue that if I were to build a second work PC, I would be looking at a used Intel based system, probably a slightly older generation with DDR3 memory, which would be much cheaper and it would still serve as a content creation platform in case my main PC dies. But that's assuming I maintain the exact same type of work that I'm doing for a while longer. So how long do you think I will keep my current AMD FX 8350 system for content creation? If nothing much changes, I will probably want to keep it for at least another three years, as long as it doesn't die on me, of course. Or as long as it's still serving the purpose for which I'm using it, and I don't feel that it's stopping me or hindering me or preventing me from content creating at the current level or even generating income. Like I mentioned before, I have not even overclocked this system. I could never be bothered to do it so I want to actually do that to try and squeeze absolutely every bit of performance I can from it and if I want to go back into gaming and if I want to increase FPS I can always swap this graphics card for a much better one there's so much of this computer's potential that I haven't used yet currently I've got it hooked up to four monitors with this GPU but I can only use three monitors at uh, any single time. It may be a configuration thing. I haven't looked into it properly, but I've got two operating systems on there and Windows being my main system for content creation. I keep Linux for a few other stuff, but also for entertainment because Linux is actually hooked up to the 40 inch TV. And for some reason, my 5.1 Logitech surround system actually works on Linux and it doesn't work with Windows drivers. Go figure, huh? But I'm even thinking about including a third operating system, probably a Hackintosh. I'm going to look into this. 
As for the inside, there is plenty of PCI or PCIe slots still available for me to add any potential hardware like M.2 SATA drives or anything else I really want. The point is, I would rather at this point spend extra money trying to maximize an older generation configuration hardware rather than trying to get current new hardware because it will not really make much difference for me at this point in time. And I'm sure there are many of you who, like me, maybe you couldn't afford you know, your dream system a few years ago, but hey, here's your chance. And you can actually put that money in there now because they cost a lot cheaper and to heck to those who actually want to judge you based on what kind of gear you possess. You know, so no remorse, go for it. But hey, things might actually change this year when Ryzen second generation gets released. And also things might change if the general computer components pricing changes later on this year. And who knows, I may even this time decide to try the new second generation Ryzen CPUs if I get my hands on them. From a tech perspective, you know, this is a tech channel after all. And of course, if I start to deal with 2K and above resolution and I'm daily uploading, and my content is over 10 minutes, I probably would want to and would need to upgrade straight away. And let's not forget Intel. What do they have up their sleeves? You know, if they may come back with something really cool, who knows? So what's the answer to the original question? When should you upgrade your computer? Answer, when your current system no longer does what you need it to do efficiently and effectively. And that mileage is gonna vary greatly amongst you. You know, I'm fully aware of uh, so many people from so many different parts of the world who cannot afford the latest and greatest in tech, but you should not feel that you should always need to do that. Because remember that the Ryzen of today is going to be the FX series of tomorrow. Technology is advancing far too rapidly for any of us to try and keep up with. Despite the so many tech channels who are always showcasing the latest tech, but they have to do this. It's part of their job. They need to stay relevant. However, you as a consumer, you have a budget, you have probably responsibilities. You don't need to fall into this never ending consumerism trap. With the upcoming release of the second generation of Ryzen processors, if you already have the first generation of Ryzen, see if you can stick with it a while longer. I'm sure you can find tons of other projects that you could invest that extra money into. And if your argument is that you can always sell your current uh, configuration or parts of it and use that money to part fund the next upgrade, that's partly true, but it will not bring you anything close to the increase in performance that you think it will, considering the time, energy, and effort you have to forego for this transition, averaging a loss altogether. Hey, you can also apply this logic to any other computer parts. Like, do you really need that next or newest graphics card? What about that yearly smartphone upgrade? You get the idea? Saying that, I am in no way advocating that you should go out in today's market and try to buy a brand new FX series system. That would be stupid. If you want to buy a new Ryzen, if you're looking to maybe upgrade, consider an, a use Intel based system. But brand new components, don't buy the FX series in 2018 and beyond. If I get a chance to get my hands on a full Ryzen system, and it will significantly increase my workflow, and I would get it for maybe half to three quarters of this original budget, you can bet your dollar that I will be upgrading straight away. So also I'm saying if you get a deal, you know, just take it, don't be a fool. I actually did a similar video when it came to a smartphone. Uh, it's entitled why I bought the Samsung Galaxy S5 in 2017. You can go and check out that video. In the meantime, I want to actually know what systems are you currently using and maybe you could put them down in the comments below so the community will help you decide whether you should keep it or try to upgrade. So that's the end of today's topic. Uh, this was quite long. By the way, this obviously is going to be edited on, on the FX 8350. So now I've got two announcements to make. Number one, I've actually got an upcoming website which I already activated. Obviously, it's going to be healmytech.com. You don't need to go there and check it out because it's really at a beginner's level right now. I'm just kind of experimenting with it for SEO purpose, really. But the main thing I want to ask you, you need to give me a feedback of what you want me to include on that website to get you to come over, right? Products or services or both. Overall, we're going to try and stick to the general philosophy of this channel, which is tech repair. 
but I never say no to trying to branch out, okay? Now, second announcement, this is completely unrelated to tech or Heal My Tech. I actually have a second channel, it's called Heal My Tejweed. It's its own entity, completely separate. On that channel, I teach Tejweed rules of the Quran. It means how to recite the Quran in Arabic language with Tajweed, with a set of rules. And it's fairly new, fairly recent. I've only got about just over 10 videos uploaded so far with you know regular content uh, coming up. So I don't think any non-Muslim will want to go and check it out. But by all means, you're more than welcome to go and check it out. And if you feel you can benefit from that, please subscribe to that so you can help me out. Like you know, I've always kept three things away from this channel religion politics and drama and i'm not about to change this so this is why it's completely unrelated so we're not going to mix these two things at any point in time unless there's a crossover somehow but i doubt it so if you're non-muslim by all means go check it out if you're muslim do yourself a favor and help me out if you benefit from it Okay guys, so now absolutely the end now. As usual, you know what to do down below. Like this video, comment and share also to people who you think might benefit. Also, please consider subscribing. It would really help me and the channel. As always, it was a pleasure talking to you. This was Ash from Here My Tech, helping you go from newbie to techie. Until next time, peace out.